be with you. How good it is to have each and every one of you here today. And what a special day it is as we begin Holy Week, the celebration of Palm Sunday, and the passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Also today we have the uh, privilege of bringing uh, three young people into the gift of Holy Baptism as well as six adults to be confirmed into membership today. So what a joyous day it is as the Holy Spirit works in and amongst us. Our, we welcome those of you that are watching from home or wherever you may be. Our order of service today is Divine Setting 2. You may download that order of service uh, from your, the link that is right there by your picture. The rest of you um, have your bulletins, either the printed out copy or the outline. Please note that uh, when we have the baptism, the baptism is in the hymnal on page 168 and following forward. I'll remind you of that again. And then also the confirmation is on page 172 and following forward, and I'll remind you of that. If any of the uh, young people or anyone would like to follow in with the procession of palms, uh, please meet me at the back of the church and we will process in with that. The rest of you I would invite to please stand as we uh, join in the procession of psalms. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gathered to greet your dearly beloved son when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our king and when he comes again, may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughters of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and he had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, you see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us go forth in peace.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please turn to page 268 for the order of baptism. And I would like the baptismal candidates and their family and sponsors to please come forward. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, 
All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And in the last chapter of Mark, our Lord has promised, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And how are these to be named? Miles William Dutter, Maribel Rose Dutter, Evelyn May Dutter. Receive the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and your heart to mark you as one that is redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you have condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. And yet, according to your great mercy, you have preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all the hosts in the Red Sea. And yet, you led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of holy baptism. Through baptism, in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Miles, Evelyn, Maribel, according to your boundless mercy, and bless them with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through the saving flood, all sin in them which has been inherited from Adam and which they themselves have committed since would be drowned and destroyed. And grant that they may be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, they would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed, and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those that they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction, and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are, at all times, to be examples to them of holy life of faith in Christ and love for their neighbors. I ask you, is it your intention to serve as sponsors for Miles, Evelyn, and Bella? And then respond, yes, with the help of God. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Now hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. And they brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased. And he said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. 
Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, and he put his hands on them and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. We join in the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. thy Thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, as as we forgive those who trespass trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord preserve your coming in and your going out, from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. Bella, Evelyn, and Miles, I ask you all to respond with the sponsors to these questions. Bella, Evelyn, and Miles, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. And do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. And do you renounce all his ways? Yes, Yes, I renounce them. And do you believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, I believe. Bella, Evelyn, and Miles, Do you desire to be baptized? Yes, I do. Miles William Dutter, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mirabel Rose Dutter, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Evelyn May Dutter, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven all of your sins, may he strengthen you with his grace to life, 
everlasting. Amen. Amen. Receive these white garments to show that you have been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all of your sin, so that you shall stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the inheritance prepared for you since before the foundation of the world. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you members of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and heirs with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We, we receive you in Jesus' name as our brother and sisters in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We, we welcome you in the, in the name, name of the Lord. Lord. The congregation, please stand for prayer. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you have graciously preserved and enlarged your family and have granted Bella, Evelyn, and Miles <clears throat> the new birth and holy baptism, and made them members of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and heirs of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as they have now become your children, you would keep them in their baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, they may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if, if we, we confess, confess our, our sins, sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive, forgive our, our sins and cleanse, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
we justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And Almighty God, in his mercy, he has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson for this, Palm Sunday, Passion of Our Lord Sunday, is recorded in the prophet Isaiah, the 50th chapter. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word in him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheek to those who would pull out my beard. I hid my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helped me. Therefore, I have been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come nearer to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord.
The epistle is from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, the second chapter. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Now, among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, the light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him, so that the word spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe. For again Isaiah said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. 
Nevertheless, many even of the authorities believed in him, but for fear of the Pharisees they did not confess it, so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for our meditation this morning, today's gospel from John 12, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. At no time in the church year are we so likely to assume the wrong attitude toward the suffering and death of Jesus as we are during the season of Lent. The suffering and death of our Savior was indeed brutal, but the writers of the Gospels don't portray the gruesomeness of Christ's suffering so that we will be filled with some degree of sympathy and pity for our Lord. Jesus himself warns us against this when he says to those tearful women, do not weep for me, weep for yourselves and for your children. Jesus was no martyr. He was no victim of circumstance. He was the victor chosen by his father to be our substitute on the cross. The evangelist wrote about the gory details, not to garner our sympathy, but to demonstrate the grievousness of our sin, to show us the kind of payment our sins deserve and to impress upon us the fact that the payment has been made that the barrier between us and God no longer stands. His great suffering, which none of us could have endured, should convince us that our sins, horrible as they are, are now forgiven. They're all forgiven, thanks be to God. Christ's incredible suffering ought to assure us, ought to assure us that we are declared righteous before God, and not only this. Since the gospel writers themselves could not keep silent about what they had seen and heard, 
but were compelled to tell others of Christ's great suffering and death. We too should be compelled to tell others what we ourselves know to be true. Jesus suffered and died to take away our sins, but not ours only. He died for everyone we come into contact with in our daily lives. The call of the cross is not only a call to repentance and faith, but also a call to bear witness. We see in today's gospel an important principle at work, a principle which Christ employs to demonstrate a parallel between himself and his followers, for it applies both to his work and to ours. He says, Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. If Jesus had not died, he would have remained a single seed, living alone with his Father, for he alone could be the Son of God. He, by virtue of his human nature, would be the only human being to share heaven with the Father. He would have no earthly brothers or sisters. There would be no adopted sons of God, no heaven shared by the children of men. The simple fact is this. If Christ wanted other human beings to live and share heaven with him, then he had to die. Of course, this is the only sense in which it could be said that Christ had to die. He had no moral obligation to die, no sins of his own to pay for. He didn't owe it to us. He was not compelled by his sense of justice to promise us anything. After all, he gave us everything in the beginning, but we threw it all away on a bet that if we disobeyed him, we would become his equals nor was his death unavoidable. It's not like he couldn't have overpowered the soldiers who came to arrest him in the garden. He himself said, no one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. So he really didn't die because he had to. He died because he wanted to. If God and humans were to be reunited, sin had to be abolished, and the punishment for sin had to be inflicted. God loved us and wanted us to be with him, but it's not as though he could just forget about sin. God's justice demands that sin be paid for. He couldn't turn his head and look the other way any more than you and I could learn to breathe underwater. It's just impossible. So Christ's death became necessary because of God's desire for us to be with him, because of his great love for us. He alone could bear the punishment for the sin of the world. He alone could abolish sin and overcome the devil. And all this he was willing to do, not because he found it necessary in himself, but because of his desire to be with us. It's like a young couple wanting to get married. They don't have to enter into that type of relationship. No one's forcing them to get married, but they do so because they want to be together. They want to make that lifelong commitment before God. Out of love for each other, they promise to be faithful and to give themselves completely to each other. They have no moral obligation to make such a commitment. There are no legal requirements. They simply do so because of the love they share. It's that kind of love that compelled Jesus to go to the cross. In this way, his single seed would bring forth much fruit. And isn't that what happened? Jesus was planted into the ground through his death and burial. And look at the fruit his death brought forth. 
through faith in his suffering, death, and resurrection. Millions upon millions have become living seeds bearing still more fruit. You and I are fruits of his planting. Praise be to God. Now, the initial planting was his work and thereby set the pattern for our work. But how do we as individual Christians, single seeds, if you will, bear much fruit? The Bible, of course, teaches in many places that God wants all people to be saved, that Christ died for all, and that he has made forgiveness available for the sins of the whole world. But as St. Paul was moved to ask in Romans 10, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Beloved, faith in Christ is simply not possible without the proclamation of the gospel. Even the sacraments derive their power from the proclaimed word of the gospel. So if people are to be saved, they have to hear about what Christ did for them on the cross. We have to face the fact that proclaiming the gospel is essential. Even though God is not willing that any should perish, even though Christ died for all, and even though the Holy Spirit wants to work faith in the hearts of everyone, still only those who believe will be saved. Those of us who remember our catechism know very well the words of Mark 16, 16, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. But you might be thinking, Pastor, I know this already. For heaven's sake, I've heard it my whole life. I know Jesus loves me. I know that he died for me. I know that he's the only way to heaven. And perhaps Philip and Andrew had heard it all before. So had the rest of the disciples. So why did Jesus keep telling them over and over again? Why did he keep reminding them of what they already knew so well? Why does he keep telling us? Why does he mention the fruit of his labor again and again to those who are already saved? For no other reason, dear friends, than to show us the need of proclaiming his word. The call of the cross is a call to bear witness. If salvation can only be found in Christ, and if people have to know about his death and resurrection to be saved, then it's the responsibility of those who already know about this to spread the word and make it known to everyone. It really can't be any other way. If we truly believe that faith in Christ is necessary for salvation, we're also going to be convinced that there is no salvation in paganism or any other world religion which denies, obscures, or ignores the preaching of the cross. We're also going to see the need for our participation in the effort to reach out with the gospel to those who don't yet believe. Now it is true that such witness bearing is not always easy. Christ never said it would be. On the contrary, he states very plainly that people will despise us if we proclaim the gospel. Listen to what he says in our text. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. You notice he doesn't say that preaching the gospel is the most glorious kind of work from an earthly point of view. 
And he doesn't say that his servants will be honored in the world. They will not be loved by mankind. Unchurched people rarely consider it a favor when a Christian shows concern for their soul. Some will hate us if we dare even to speak to them of sin and grace. So has it always been. So will it ever be. Bearing witness for the sake of Christ may cause hardships. It could mean a loss of friends. It could mean a rejection by loved ones. It may even bring shame and disgrace as far as the world is concerned. But Christ tells us that if we serve him, his father will honor us. I guess it comes down to this. Who would you rather receive honor from? A world that at best will forget about you in time? Or God, whose honor lasts for all eternity, who loved you enough to die for you even though he didn't have to, who in the days of his earthly ministry entered upon this week knowing what lay at the end of it, but did it anyway. May his love for you so fill your heart that it spills out to everyone around you, that your seed may bear much fruit to his great joy and yours. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. At this time, the congregation may be seated, and I would ask for the compliments to please come forward. Please turn to page 272 for the service of confirmation. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of our Lord. Do you this day in the presence of God and this congrega congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Then respond, yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil? Then respond, yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Then respond, yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Then respond, yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth? Then respond, yes, I believe. 
And do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Then respond, yes, I believe. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Then respond, yes, I believe. And do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Then respond, I do. And do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? Then respond, I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully, then respond, I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Then respond, I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it, then respond, I do by the grace of God. We rejoice with thanks, thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of our Lord, that you have confessed the faith and have been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Madeline Jesse Grafer, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, may he strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Erwin James Graper, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water in the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, may he strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first to the Jews, then for the Gentile. Romans 1, verse 16. Cora Beth Dutter, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has given you all, forgiven you all your sins, may he strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. 
Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Nicholas William Dutter, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, may he strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Kyle Adam Fink. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, may he strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. John chapter 14, verse 27. Heather Marie Fink, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, may he strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. John 14, verse 27. The congregation would please stand. You guys can stay if you like. Okay, stand up. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them to both with heart to believe, and with mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that, bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by, the, by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous teachings, that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving the body and blood by the Lord's Supper. Strengthen them in, to believe that no one can make sanctification or satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in him, learning from the sacrament to love you and their neighbor and to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. 
We welcome these into our congregation as members of the body of Christ who now receive his body and blood and the true forgiveness of all of their sins. We welcome them. Please remain standing if you're able as we continue now with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. King of glory, Lord of hosts, lift up the gates of our hearts and make way for your blessed Son. Forgive our sins and renew our souls, that we may glorify him who died to save us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, our King, your Son entered Jerusalem as the true ruler, ready to lay down his life for his people. Grant the same mind to those in authority over us, that they would discharge their duties even for the least among us. Lord, in your mercy. According to your gracious will, O Lord, look on all who suffer illness or physical disability, including Rick, Kathy, Jan, Mark, and Jean, Carlton, Shannon, Michael, David, Jean, Matt, Ed, Jeff, Tom, Dennis and Judy, Carol, George, Frank, Shirley, Bruce, Don, Michael, Blaine, Colin, Mary, Darius, Gary, Peter, Brenda, Carla, Sam, Dottie, Karen, Jackie, Michelle, Betsy, Donna, Diane, Lisa, Lynn, Julia, Norb, Joan, Kathy, Leroy, Dan, Ray, Jordan, Joanne, Scott, Liz, Bud, Joyce, Emil, Carla, Merle, Kurt, Laverne, Dorothy, Terry and all whom we now remember in our hearts. Bless them with what is best for them according to your good and gracious will and strengthen their faith. Open their hearts to serve their bodily needs. Open our hearts to serve their bodily needs. Take into your care those who mourn the death of loved ones. Give them peace and comfort through your holy word. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Giving Father, we praise you together with those celebrating special events this week, including those with birthdays, Jordan, Linda, Joan, Sandra, Logan, Michael, Brian, Anne, Phyllis, Diane, George, and Skylar, and those with wedding anniversaries, Richard and Nancy. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, mercifully bless the Christian education of your children in our parish, that they may grow up in your fear to the praise of your holy name. Bless our Christian day school and all other settings in which our children are brought closer to you. Restrain the activities of the evil one who would seek to undermine these efforts to provide for the spiritual growth of your children. Help us all to regard these children and our educational ministries as gifts from you. Encourage the members of our congregation to support those who teach and those who learn. Give joy to all who serve as teachers and give them the privilege of seeing the fruits of their labors. Lord, in your mercy. Watch over all who travel, O Lord, especially the Carenti family. Make their journey joyful and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. Your Eternal Lord, as your son once entered humbly into Jerusalem to the cries of Hosanna, so send him to us according to his promise in the Holy Sacrament, that we may eat his body and drink his blood in repentance and faith for the forgiveness of our sins and in the unity of a true confession. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son, not in wrath, but in mercy. 
as we enter this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation. Show us the answer to your people's prayers of Hosanna in the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the offering. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise 
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again, and that the serpents who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name of the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given into death. And now may this very body and blood of our Lord strengthen and preserve for you until I am everlasting. The Lord be our
the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith, the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you've refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated. We have a couple of matters of importance. We'll try to keep them brief. First up, Carol Evenson on behalf of the Ladies' Aid. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have a brief message from the Trinity Ladies Aid. This year we are blessed to host the LWML Zone 11 Spring Rally. Oh, I'm not loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> On Saturday, April 22nd, the presentation for the event will be Something Wonderful Happened Here, A Visit to the Holy Land, presented by Reverend Timothy and Deb Kinney. We would like to invite all of you interested to attend, and yes, that includes ladies and gentlemen. Um, the event will start at 9 a.m. in the large fellowship hall, where a breakfast brunch will be served, followed by the presentation. There is no cost, but we will be collecting gifts from the heart, which will be distributed between the Harbor, Harbor House Domestic Abuse Center in Appleton and Trinity's own food pantry. There is a sign-up sheet on the spinner in the back of the narthex, for those of you interested in attending, along with a list of the items that are suggested for the gifts from heart. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing many of you there. Thank you. Now, I just want to uh, recount the schedule for the upcoming week, because it is a bit complicated. There are no services on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, Holy Thursday, also known as Monday Thursday, 6.30 p.m. service. There's no morning service this year. Friday is a very active day. First of all, at uh, uh, 10.30 in the morning, we'll be meeting by the fountain, the name of the park again? Riverside Park. Riverside Park for the crosswalk. They'll start there and they'll work their way back toward Trinity, hopefully to arrive around noon, which is the beginning of our Traore service. Traore is a Latin phrase meaning three hours. It's uh, commemorating the three hours that Christ uh, hung dying on the cross and, and in total darkness in the middle of the day. Uh, so uh, that service, as I mentioned, three hours. You don't have to come for all three hours unless, you know, you want to. I'll be here. A yeah. uh, pastor will be here. Um, so uh, it's, it's neatly divided into half-hour segments. So if you can only come for 30 minutes on your lunch break or whatever, you can do that. There are plenty of opportunity on each half-hour to to leave if you must. Uh, so please come be a part of that with us. It's a very, very rewarding time of, of contemplation uh, on, on what the Savior has done for us in saving us. In the evening is the office of Tenebrae. This is a, a service of lights. 
in, in which the, the lights are, are gradually darkened throughout the service and, until they all go out. And then we have what's known as the strepitus. That's the loud bang symbolizing the, the sealing of the tomb by rolling the stone in front of it. I, I, I was so vigorous a few years ago in, in making that sound that I broke the glass top on the, on the desk in the vestry. Uh, I have recently spoken to the director of the Board of Properties because you know the old saying, you break it, you bought it. So I'm going to be replacing that. Uh, Saturday, uh, a couple of really important things as well. Holy Saturday service at a regular five o'clock time. This is the, the service of, of Easter vigil. Uh, it, uh, weather permitting, we're gonna start outside around a, a fire pit from which the, uh, the torch will be lit and we'll all light candles off of that and then come into the church in darkness. It's very, very, very dramatic. At a certain point, all the lights come on and you see that the chancel is decorated for, for Easter. So it, uh, I love the service, it's one of my favorites. Following that, uh, beginning around six o'clock, depending on uh, how long that service goes, so maybe seven o'clock, but anyhow, uh, is, is the, the prayer vigil uh, sponsored by our Board of Elders. Um, there's a sign-up sheet for that in the back. Um, you can come for, uh, we used to like plan on come, being here for like at least a half hour. If you can't do that, that's fine. If you want to stay longer, that's fine. You can stay the whole time if you want to. Um, it, it goes quickly, believe me, um, because y you realize what a, what a blessing it is to be able to come and just sit in the sanctuary and pray. Uh, without having to like, do anything else. You could just simply sit there and quietly pray. It's a wonderful opportunity. Now, uh, Easter morning starts very early, 6.30 with the, with the, uh, the sunrise service. 7.30, they start serving the Easter breakfast. 9 o'clock, the, the festival Easter uh, divine service. So uh, a lot of things happening. Now, that's not the end of it. On the Wednesday following Easter, we, we don't have a service, but we do have a remarkable concert that's proposed, that's, that's planned, that's coming. The uh, bell choir from Concordia University of Wisconsin is going to be here to do a concert for us. It's going to be absolutely marvelous. I'm so looking forward to it. Now, um, they, they have not asked us to pay them anything. Seven o'clock, thank you. They have not asked us to pay them anything. They will, we will take a free will offering. But what they have asked us to do is provide the students a meal. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet in the back for that as well. We need lots of help. Um, if you can help out in some way by providing food or, or, or help with, that ser with, with the serving of that meal, talk to Rosemary. Uh, she's the one coordinating this. So um, we could sure appreciate and will appreciate any help you may be able to provide. I think that's enough out of me. Pastor, your turn. Two quick things. Uh, first of all, Easter breakfast, as Pastor mentioned, is next Sunday. Saturday morning, we could use help from our youth and their parents, or actually anybody is more than welcome to help us out to set up the basement for the Easter breakfast. And then serving and clean up on Easter morning, likewise. And the sign-up sheet is right in the back of the church for that. Would love to have help from everyone. Um, <clears throat> and then once again, we welcome through holy baptism and through confirmation into our family, the Fink, Dutter, and Graper family. And we are so joyful that they have joined us and look forward to them taking and incorporating into our flock. Amen. Thank you. Let's, let's sing. God's blessing. Look, we went almost, well, we went an hour and three quarters. You know, it didn't seem like a, hardly anything to me. We could do that every week, every week okay? No, just kidding, just kidding. Let's, let's sing. God's blessings upon your week.